What's up, YouTube? So I'm finally getting to this hatchet head that I got off of eBay. This S-Wing hatchet was super rusty. The handle, the leather handle was super worn out. And I really was excited actually to put a different type of handle on here. I wanted to do something totally out there, something totally different. So watch and see what happens. Now this leather handle, like I mentioned, was super worn out. These leather discs were way crusty, it started to crumble. I think some of them were even rotting from inside. And you can see there that there's a mega amount of rust inside. This handle was just getting worse and worse. All the more reason to really replace it. It actually came off a lot easier than I thought it would. I really thought this would be a little harder, but just cutting it down the back was sufficient to then just pry these things apart. At this point I wasn't sure what I would do with the end of the handle, but I knew I needed to get it off to, to do what I wanted to do. Now, um, my Evaporust is starting to get way dirty, but Evaporust, uh, I asked them, like, how, how much can you reuse Evaporust? And one of the things they told me was that one gallon of Evaporust is capable of absorbing half a pound of rust. I'm pretty sure I haven't had that much absorbed yet, but... It still seemed to be working, even though it's black. <laughs> now, you can hear, as it happens frequently on my videos, you can hear uh, tinklings of pianos in the background. Uh, my wife's a piano teacher. My kids love to play, play the piano, so you'll often hear that in the background. Sometimes when I'm doing it fast, you can hear it playing fast because the piano is not too far from the garage even though the doors are closed especially my oldest son he really likes to hammer away on the piano now after using that evaporus I guess I just went ahead and grind it away I could have done that without it but at the time when I use the evaporus. I wasn't sure what I, what kind of finish I wanted to do and what it would turn out like. But I had now decided at this point that I was going to go for a full-on mirror polish. That's something I haven't done before. Typically when I do an axe, I, one, I use my axes. And axes that are super shiny really don't last super shiny. They get stuffed and dirty really quick. But I have, have never done this, so this is a new thing to me, trying to make it as shiny as possible. And it took a lot of sanding. It's not in the video, but probably like four hours of sanding away, slowly getting to higher and higher grits. But I am happy with the finish. I am happy with how it turned out. And and it was kind of fun doing. So now you guys get to see what I'm going to do with this handle. I started with this scarf that I got at the thrift store for $3. And you'll see here just what this scarf's made of. 100% cashmere wool made in Scotland. This stuff is super soft. And because it's made of natural fibers, it should be great for making micarta handle scales. Now typically you see people making micarta using cotton type fabrics, using linen, um, burlap, other things like that. But this wool, I did it for a, a knife on a previous video, if you guys want to look at that, I did a wool blanket micarta handle scales on a, a knife I restored. But this, this is one, it's a little thinner, 
it's softer, and it's a different type of material. And I thought, one, the green color should look great on the axe handle. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy, and then I'll be soaking the, the pieces of the cashmere scarf that I've made and layering them together and stacking them to make this epoxy handle with the wool cashmere creating kind of the, the structure to the epoxy. So it will end up kind of being like carbon fiber or like fiberglass, but it'll be this cool looking handle and as I shape it, it should kind of look like, like wood grain but with a fabric look and texture to it. It should be pretty cool. So now that I've got it stacked, I had some leftover epoxy, so I just kind of dumped it out on top, hoping that it would all kind of ooze in throughout as I compress it. I'm going to compress it and leave it for a day to cure. So after being clamped up for a day, I was actually quite happy how this turned out. You can see the, the trays I used, those were uh, like, I think it's like cinnamon bun trays that I got at the thrift store, I got two of them. Um, and they're almost square, but one fit inside the other just right, and I thought it would work perfectly for making these micarta handle scales. I'll probably do it more times. This is the second time I've done it. And I, I really like the material that can be created. So, starting to think of all kinds of ideas. I picked up some really big red jeans that I plan on using the denim to create some, some micarta also. Look for that in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe so that when that video comes out, you'll get to see it. So now I've got to decide what shape I want to make the handle. I want to make sure that it fits. I'm going to put the end cap on the end of the handle. I don't plan on attaching it the way it was attached before though. So I got myself my little template, cutting it out. Dark things, a white pencil crayon in your shop is a good thing to have. This white pencil crayon comes in handy on these darker materials where a pencil or a pen just doesn't quite cut it. Back to the band shop. Now, because the handle is going to taper down towards the front, I had to, I, it was either going to be at the beginning or the end that I tapered it, and I wanted that taper to be on the inside so that the grain could be plain, could be flat with, with the, the handle rather than it tapering completely on the outside. So it was just a choice to do that. Way. Now, this is a, a tray that I got at the thrift store for a buck, like a cafeteria tray from, I don't know, the 50s or 60s or something. It has like a cryolite, triate or something like that with a type of material. I wanted to use this as a spacer to, uh, because as you can see here, the, the neck or the handle portion of the axe or hatchet doesn't doesn't go all the way to the edge of the handle and it was either cutting grooves out of the cashmere micarta or putting a spacer in there and I went for the spacer. Also it kind of breaks it up, gives it some other contrasting colors and I actually like using weird other things to make my handles or make other stuff. So repurposing things, reusing them, being creative and what I do is 
is kind of my process. It's what I do when I make stuff. So after letting it cure for a day, I was back in my shop with my belt sander, and it's time to shape the handle. I put the end cap on just so that I can shape to that and uh, plan on just leaving it in there just with these screws that I used. Maybe not the prettiest, but it's what I have. This shaping took quite a bit of sanding. I cut most of that out. But it shapes really easy. I'm using an 80 grit belt on this and it uh, cleaned off really quick. Then I just hit it with first 100 grit sandpaper and then 120. I did actually go to a 220. With the 220, it made it too smooth. Um, because this is cashmere, the when I cleared it off here, after the 120, it was really soft. Really soft, but felt solid in the hand. And grippy at the same time. So I considered it done and uh, now it was time to make a sheath. So off camera I made this little template and then I wanted to cut it out of a single piece of leather. Um, I don't like to waste leather. I do what I can to not be wasteful. As a boy scout, I'm, I'm frugal, thrifty, in what I do. I actually really like leather work. Um, I like the practical nature of leather. I really like how it looks. I like the aesthetic. And I, I just like using it. So this sheath, as you'll see, and my goal is it, it's really just to cover the, the tip. It will have just some a, a simple snap on it, and it'll just be stitched on the side. No rivets. It doesn't need to be huge and industrial, just nice and simple. That quick little bit there was me putting a needle in the first hole just to hold hold everything in place so that I can punch the holes consistently. I just do a quick stitch of it. I use um, artificial sinew. It's kind of a wax nylon thread. Oh, here I'm putting the snap in, actually, sorry, before I stitch. And I guess I stain it before I stitch it, too. Now this stain that I'm using um, also has like a, a wax in it for buffing it. So you can buff the leather when it's done to give it kind of a, a sheen instead of a, a dual coat. So you, you can get them in, in types where you stain and then you put kind of a wax coat on after this, this stain has both in it. It's quick, easy. It's maybe not necessarily the prettiest, but it works. Here, I'm just thinning out that um, the spot for the, the snap. I wanted to make sure it was able to clear the grommet and snap together real well. Now I'm stitching, as you can see. And again, with um, a double layer thick of artificial sinew. I'm just going to melt the tips. Now most of my cuts, when I cut this out, were fairly rough. Um, and 
that was with it in mind that I would then, once I had it shaped rough, I would take it to the belt sander just to finish out the edges real well. And I find that it's a simple, easy way to just get nice finished edges. Now I just need to apply the stain to those tips. Now, the it was the next morning I let it dry overnight, and the sheath was really done by then. It looked great. I feel like the, the hatchet and the sheath all turned out really great. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, because it's so pretty, I, I will be hesitant to go do uh, much chopping with it right away. But uh, it probably will end up being a user. That's what I do. I don't like to just leave things on display. I like to use them. So it turned out great. Look at that reflection. Beautiful. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I really enjoyed making this S-Wing hatchet and restoring it, making it all shiny and polished. And I loved making this micarta wool handle. It was fun to take it from a nice scarf to a handle. It's kind of neat to do that. I think it feels great. The cashmere wool is just smooth and soft. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. I'm sure there's a lot of things I could have done better. There's a lot of things I would do differently if I did it again, but I'm quite happy with the end result. I hope you are too. I'm new at this on YouTube. My channel I've started uh, just a couple months ago, and I could really use your support. So please subscribe to the channel, like my videos, comment in the comments, hit the notification bell if you want to know when new videos are coming up. I'm trying to make at least one, if not more, a week. I have lots of projects. I still have a number of axe heads to refurbish that you saw in that unboxing from eBay that I plan on finishing uh, in the next couple months. So there'll be lots of, one, if you like axe videos, there'll be lots more of those. I still have a couple hammers. I have some power tools that I got at the thrift store that I plan on restoring. So please subscribe, share it with your friends, and let's make this thing go well. And look for opportunities, again, to give those old things new life. Ciao.